Well, I guess we should be happy that it's Friday. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jack Womack. I'm the pastor at Hope Community United Methodist Church here in Pasadena, Texas. It is Friday. Uh, it's uh, an exciting time to uh, have another weekend of doing the same thing we've been doing during the week. Uh, I don't know about you, but typically I get to have a nap between naps. Uh, it is a little tedious. I, I've talked to several friends lately that are going stir crazy and I know how you feel. It's difficult. Uh, I do have uh, some interesting news, I suppose. The, uh, the bishop of our conference and the Baptist church, uh, I'm not sure which Baptist conference, and the Episcopals and the uh, Presbyterians have co-signed a letter and uh, where we are grateful that uh, Governor Abbott understands the essentialness of uh, church uh, that our faith communities and the practices we do at, in a religious sense are, are, are absolutely essential. Uh, we also uh, are very aware that we don't want to make anybody sick or spread this virus. So uh, at this point, the bishop's guidance is that uh, there will be no gatherings of significance, face-to-face -face gatherings, uh, most likely for the next six weeks. Although there is a caveat to that, that there's a number in there between 10 and 50 uh, which would preclude open worship, but we'll see how that goes in relation to smaller groups like uh, Bible studies and uh, Bible classes, things like that. So just stay tuned. Uh, things are fluid and constant, and they're always seeming to change a little bit. Um, the uh, In my own personal life, just to keep you updated on that, my, my uh, PSA came back undetectable. Uh, for 13 and a half months after surgery. Uh, that's pretty normal after prostate surgery. However, uh, with the Gleason 9, which would mine was, it becomes uh, exciting, not just uh, normal. It was exciting that it would be so. But the doctor was very excited, as, of course, or Kathy and I. The, uh, that's one thing that's going on. And, and then uh, as... Uh, <laughs> on uh, Wednesday evening, as we turned on the 10 o'clock news, our internet went down, and uh, so we are scheduled this morning to have the wonderful internet people come and repair it uh, so that we can be back on target. I could do these uh, messages from home. Uh, I like to come down here and do it because it's quiet, but uh, I could do them from home if I had internet, but uh, that's out of the question right this minute. So today I want to read to you from Amos. Uh, I, it's a passage that I've preached about several times. It has some unique parts in my own history, but uh, it's in Amos in the cha seventh chapter. And this is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said to me, See, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. So, uh, when the first time I, I uh, ever had the opportunity to preach about this particular message uh, from the, God, from the, the Bible, uh, I referred to a plumb line, and a number of people uh, in the group said, what is a plumb line? So I, I, uh, a friend of mine, I haven't seen him in a long time, but if he's listening, hi, Scott. Uh, Scott Roberts showed up a, a couple of days later and uh, brought me a plumb bob, which you have to have a plumb bob in order to have a plumb line. And so what you'll see about this plumb line is that it, uh, it tends to be very straight. Uh, these are used in plumbing and construction and other times, much like we would nowadays use a level. Uh, this works great. Gravity's going to make this plumb bob go straight down to the bottom, and we're going to have a very straight line. And, and so you, you see this would have been a building technique for all of the ages. They would have been using things like this. They probably didn't have a pretty little brass uh, plumb bob. They probably had other things. And, and there are some that are much more precise than this one. This one, if you see, has a, not a very fancy a uh, little thing to hook it on to, uh, and it's not that, but it's precise enough, but it's not as precise as some. When I was in, uh, back uh, about, uh, oh, 15 years ago, I was in Mexico City not too long after the earthquake, and uh, they were re-leveling the uh, 
the National Cathedral. And uh, in, in the, the National Cathedral, like many other Catholic churches, is built in the shape of a cross. And in the center, uh, where the dome was, they had a plumb bob. It was as big as a person. Uh, it was hung by a big, thick cable because it was very heavy. And it was pointing down at an insignia that was built into the floor that looked somewhat like a compass rose. And uh, the goal was to level the building and get it back into the precise shape that it originally was so that this uh, design on the floor was dead center underneath the, uh, the rotunda or the, the, the top of the dome. Uh, it was a graphic example of how uh, some things are always in line, like plumb bobs. They're always in line, plumb lines. And then some things are not. Uh, the rest of the world being the case. And so we, do, we live in this time right now where uh, there's a temptation to, uh, to criticize everything that some leader says. Uh, there's a temptation to uh, criticize the fact that uh, things are closed or criticize the way they're opening. Or, you know, you would think, well, we decided to reopen. Everybody would have some joy about that. And then, of course, now everybody says, well, no, we have no joy about it. They're opening too soon. Uh, there's no place in the midst of that where things are, are consistent. The only place that I can tell you that I can find that consistency is in the Holy Bible. This is the place where we take this, that we learn about God, we strengthen our relationship with God through reading and understanding of the Scriptures, and then the Scriptures become for us this plumb line or a place where we can weigh or measure where we stand in relation to that. Now, over the years, we've heard things like, what would Jesus do? That's a form uh, of a plumb line. In other words, what would Jesus do? What would somebody say about that? What would should we do? Martin Luther King was famous for many little sayings that brought us to the place of understanding where in the midst of righteousness we were. Well, friends, we know we're not very righteous. That's not a secret to me. It's not a secret to any of us. And the more we talk about things, the more silly things that get said. We, we, we make snap judgments and we, we do other things. The, the reality is, friends, that if we can do what they've asked and we can wear our mask and we can keep from giving the disease, because some of us have it and don't know it, if we can prevent giving the disease to someone else, we can eventually overcome this thing. It does appear that it's not going to like summertime very much. Well, certainly we know in Houston we get plenty of summertime. It does appear that on surfaces that are outside, like uh, park benches and things, it's not going to have a long life when we get good hot weather. So the odds of picking it up from something else are, are much reduced. The danger is that we'll continue to pick it up from each other. Now, I want to tell you, I, I don't think we get sin, in a sense, from park benches or playground equipment. Where we get the notion that sin is okay is from each other. When we forget where we should put our main focus, when we forget the center of what's important in our life, then we begin to waver and we, do, we change that. And we say, well, it's not, it's not a problem if it's off a little. Well, it depends. If you put the first building, the first block, the first brick, of a building in the corner and you have it this way, guess what's going to happen to the rest of the building? You see, it becomes essentially important for us to go back to what's important, what's basic, what's the reality. There is not a, a, a large gray space between right and wrong. Now, we have many things that we have gray spaces on, right? We have many places where we aren't sure what's right or what's wrong. But there are some essentials that never change. And that's what God tries to tell us through. As we read through the Old Testament and we see the struggles people had with trying to do what God asked them to do. When we read through the New Testament and we see what happens when a person that demonstrates full righteousness. In other words, Jesus' time on earth looked exactly like this. He knew what to do. He knew what was expected of him. And he did it. And what happened to Jesus was that other people didn't like the way it looked. I, I saw a cute little saying on Facebook. You, Some of you may have seen it. I think I reposted it. And it showed a big dog uh, and a little bitty dog. And both of them had been in the mud. 
And uh, the big dog said it wasn't that deep, and the little dog, of course, had mud up to its neck. You see, it does but depend on where we are as to what we decide is righteous. And when we start to measure it against who we are, as corrupt as we are, as sinful as we are, when we become the measuring stick, friends, then I think we're failed. We have to get outside of ourselves. This is not this is not a Jack Womack or a Hope Community Methodist Church or any of your problem. This is a global problem. It's a glo- just exactly the same way that sin is. And we have to continue to correlate these two things. We cannot do anything about what others do, but we can do what we do. And I, for years now, have preached this. I believe it's absolutely true that when we become the center of, of godliness or righteousness or or following Jesus to the fullest of our possibility, that we can become the epicenter of change in this world. Who's we? Well, those of us that are listening to this, I, I believe we have the opportunity to change the world. Jesus has mandated to us that we should go into all the nations and spread the gospel. What gospel are we spreading? We're spreading the one of a plumb line. We're spreading the one of there's no place in here for us to hedge on righteousness and how do we maintain that righteousness by realizing if you want to think about this this thing does a great job of measuring it but who holds the line above in this story god does and it's god that decides what's righteous it's god that decides how we should live and we need to pay credence to what god says love one another As I have loved you, Jesus says. Now we know how much Jesus loved us. And he continues to love us even to this day. We spend far too much time on other things. On other uh, conversations. It doesn't matter to me a bit right this minute. We may want to discover this someday. But how the virus got here is irrelevant. The fact it's here. There was a great amount of work done after John Kennedy was killed to figure out if it was a conspiracy or if one person did it or if 10 people did it. You know, as all of that money and time and effort and energy was spent, the reality that the president, our beloved president of the United States was dead. That's where we are today, friends. We have a, we have a coronavirus. It's called a novel coronavirus because it's a new thing. It's one they haven't seen before. They're trying to figure it out. We've been given some best practices. Don't you think God gave us best practices as well? Don't you think that when God tells us to love one another, when God tells us to do unto others as we'd have them do unto us, when God gives us those orders, commands, they're not great suggestions. We need to focus on that, friends. We need to be careful about being led down other paths, to where we end up at the other deal deciding that somebody else is way over the line. God is the one that makes the line. God is the one that ultimately determines our fate. But we have some control over that, do we not? So my question for you today is as you go out into the world, can you visualize this line? Can you visualize the place where you know You know when you're pushing the line. You know when you're crossing that line. You know, I had uh, questions asked me every now and then about ethical questions. I've never had anybody ask me an ethical question that they didn't already know the answer to. We know what's right. We know when we feel bad because we've talked bad or down someone else. We know that spreading ill will and discontent doesn't help anything. I remember a time not too long ago when we were challenged uh, to uh, to take care of things in a certain way, and uh, you know we struggle with this all the time here at the church. Uh, This is our church, much like it's your house. And you know some of us live in cluttered, disruptive houses, but we all hope for a time when we can live with that peace that Jesus promises, when He says. I leave peace with you, I live. I leave not the peace the world gives. This is a peace that surpasses understanding. So in this time on Friday, when we might be thinking about going to the lake or doing the other things we usually would have done, let's take time to reflect. 
let's reflect on what God calls us to do. What we see and what God believes or teaches us would be righteous behavior. Let's think a little bit about this. Put this mental image into our brains for the weekend. In Jesus' name, I conclude. Amen. Let me pray. Dear God, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for the plumb line. We thank you for Jesus Christ. Amen.